Welcome everyone. How's it going? <laughs> it's been a long journey into buzzer bing and a long journey into presenting, finally. <laughs> um, so hi, my name is Sublele Tlongwane. Uh, first things first, uh, oh goodness. So first things first, um, there I am right there in the middle. I like attending tech events and tech meetups. So you're welcome to follow me on social media on extra underscore bytes. So I sometimes talk about the events and sometimes throw occasional shade at the industry, because why not? Um, I also work at a really cool telecommu telecommunications company. Um, it's my second year at the company. I'm also a grad <laughs> as well. So it's not only my second year at the company, but also second year of adulting in general. And um, because, you know, it's been a long and tiring two years, so I figured why not do a talk about it? And so fun fact, it's also my first time Conference speaker, so please, everyone, be, be nice to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. So as I mentioned, I'll be talking about my journey into Buzzer Bingo, so my journey into data science as well. So I'll be talking about my, talking, just giving a brief background about um, the world of data science, some of the myths that I've heard, um, uh, typical data science workflow, my data science toolbox, so that's basically some of the tools that we use, and some of the learning paths and communities that I've also attended, I mean, been involved in also um, attend events of. So great. What is with all the hype? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and I don't know, wait, sorry, I'm just gonna, it's a random, so there's a random message just popping up on the screen. Uh, cancel. Great. <laughs> Just want to make sure I fix that because I can't see anything on the screen on my side. Um, so what is with all the hype exactly? I have absolutely no idea, and I don't know why. I, think, I don't know why there's this sort of spotlight on the tech industry lately, especially in the data science and machine learning world. And I don't know why if people think that machine learning is just going to fix everyone's problems. <laughs> I don't know why I think that, um, and I don't know if it's because um, people think, and I don't know if it's because of the media and this highlight on the fourth industrial revolution and the impacts that 4R will have in our future, especially in the South African and de developing country context. Honestly, so I basically have no idea, and because, and after venturing into this world of journey of data, science, data scientist, I had absolutely no idea what it was really about. I'm coming from a computer science background, um, so, I come from a computer science background, so when I'd applied for the job of being a big data, I didn't really know what data scientist was, but for some reason they liked my answers <laughs> and I got in. <laughs> so the past two years I've also heard a bunch of myths that I also fell victim to as well. So one of them being that um, data science is the same thing as big data. It's not. Data science can exist without big data. Data science is more about um, the use of the data and the algorithms and the methods that we, that we use to be able to deal with the data and analyze the data. And then big data is more about the type of data, so the fact that the data comes in different varieties and forms, um, the data is generated at really large speeds, um, and the data is in really large volumes as well. So another, my, another myth I've heard about, so I'm just gonna randomly choose, uh, machine learning causes mass unemployment. To a certain extent, I don't think so. I think there are some sort of jobs that will be automated, um, and obviously those jobs will end up being phased out, um, being done by humans. But I guess in the future there will be more jobs that will be um, that will be created. Uh, one of the top day AI systems can't be biased. Yes, yes they can because AI systems are being coded by humans, <laughs> and humans are biased. So because of that, obviously, if you have a team that's not exactly diverse, it's going to end up showing up in your code. OK, great. So I have a general view of some of the myths that I've come across in the past two years. And being a computer scientist, um, I sort of knew about programming. I think that was my main strong point. But I think a lot of people have seen the Venn diagrams with data science. I don't know, for some reason, we love Venn diagrams. Most of the time, I don't really know what they mean, but <laughs> um, so I knew these three components separately and independently from each other, so math stats, programming, and subject matter expertise. And the CS grad, I mainly knew of the one that was in the middle. And I was like, okay, great. So I have programming, 
fantastic. If you ask me what machine learning is, I can tell you because I got it from the internet. Um, <laughs> Machine learning is obviously a study of algorithms and methods that allows to get computers to be able to think and act like humans do without exactly being explicitly programmed, programmed and their learning is improved over time by feeding it data and information. Okay, great. So I know what machine learning is. I can also tell you what the machine learning algorithm types are because you know I needed that to get marks in school. So supervised learning, um, being able to use previous data being able to use previous data, which is labeled, and be able to use those previous data to build a model um, that will obviously help you predict a correct output. And then you have unsupervised learning, which instead of using data that is labeled, you have unlabeled data, so it predicts, um, it predicts an output, target variable for, sorry, it predicts a target variable for previous unseen data, which is also unlabeled. And then we also have um, uh, reinforcement learning, which is basically a way of learning from interaction. Um, where, sorry, goodness. Navigating screens is difficult. <laughs> so, way of learning from interaction um, in order to achieve a goal, in order to achieve a goal through use of rewards and punishments, and obviously, um, and obviously it tries to extend on its rewards in the long run. Okay, great. So, we know what supervised learning is, the basics, unsupervised learning is, and reinforcement learning. And because I also need more marks in class, we know that classifications of type are supervised learning, so being able to predict a discrete target variable. And some of the applications for that would be creative scoring and facial recognition. And then also just to give a brief, like, a brief outline, um, some of the people in my class right now, I think they're in the audience, will probably see that this looks extremely familiar. <laughs> Um, so you also have there in the bottom on the right, you have your target variable, and then you also have your training data set, uh, which is used as your input, and including your features, including, a, including your target variable. And with that, you produce a model. And then as well, at the bottom, you have, your you, have, you, have, I'm sorry, you have your test data set, and so you apply the model that we built in the beginning um, into previously unseen data, which is previously unseen data. And then regression, which is for predicting a continuous target variable, so the previous one, um, classification was for predicting a discrete target variable. So regression is also a type of machine, sorry, a type of supervised learning. And um, so it's a similar concept, but instead, we obviously we produce a con continuous target variable, not a discrete one. And then we have unsupervised learning as well, which um, an example of that is clustering. So if you're given a set of data points, um, each described with certain attributes and features, um, so I each guy with certain attributes and features, find a way in which you can divide these data points into groups. And some examples for that would be online recommendation systems, customer segmentation, and character recognition. First of all, am I doing well so far? <laughs> Great. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Please slow me down if I end up speaking too fast, because I know I have a tendency to do that. Um, so, okay, great. I know what machine learning is. I know what machine learning algorithm types are. I know how to code machine learning algorithms from scratch, because that's fantastic. So if you give me a problem, some data, I'll be able to build your model, and I'll be able to give you some sort of solution. So here I am, first year of adulting, and I'm like, okay, great, I can do this. I'm like starting off on a really high point. First week I get told, oh, I don't actually need to learn. I don't actually need to use or code machine learning algorithms from scratch. I can just plug in a library and everything will be great. So I'm like, oh, then what type of value am I even bringing to the company then? <laughs> what else am I supposed to be doing with my time? Um, so I'm like, okay, fine, it's, it's okay. I'll just start from the very beginning. So I just grab, a, so I'll just start from the very beginning, um, start from scratch. And I, use, uh, I, I went on Kaggle, found a random data set because you know, I needed to practice and and then I ended up using Jupyter Notebook. I didn't even know what Jupyter Notebook was, to be honest. I'm kind of used to Atom text editors, and <laughs> I'm also used to like NetBeans and Eclipse. So I'm like, okay, it's fine. I'll just use this really cool notebook looking thing. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I get a random data set from Kaggle, and then we read in um, the data set, and then I select a bunch of features. And then, okay, great, I plug in a bunch of models that I did not at all need to code from scratch, apparently, and then I get an output. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so what else am I supposed to be doing with my life? Because this is only one hour <laughs> of my job, right? Not even one hour. I think it's one hour because I still need to set up the Jupyter Notebook. 
<laughs> so I'm like, okay, maybe I need to actually know what this data science thing is and what this data science thing is about. So I go to my trusty source, my trusty buddy, being Google. Um, so I Google what exactly is data science, which is a multidisciplinary field in which we have different methods and algorithms in order to find insights and patterns in data, build productive, build productive models, and produce data visualizations to be able to engage audiences in a compelling and effective way. Obviously, you do all of this to, build, to solve business problems and make better business decisions. Like, okay, great, thank you, Google. So I find something that breaks it up even more, which is the data science life cycle. Um, so apparently, I was only doing the one in the middle, which was modeling, did not do anything before and after. So in the beginning, we have business understanding, so obviously talking to stakeholders and getting specific requirements from stakeholders, asking stakeholders questions of what exactly, what type of problem are we trying to solve, and what type of problem are we exactly trying to solve. Um, then you have data acquisition, because you know, data sits in a lot of places, it doesn't sit at, sit at all in one place, um, especially when you're in a really big company like I am. Um, it's the most frustrating thing ever, so you need to find a way to be able to acquire this data, um, even though sometimes a lot of it sits in databases and CSV files and Excel spreadsheets. Um, and then we also have data preparation, which is obviously because you know, data is not clean, it's messy, to, and you also need to analyze this data. So data preparation is more about cleaning your data, analyzing your data, et cetera. And then you have modeling, which is obviously the only thing I did, where you build your model, and then you also have productionization and deployment and monitoring and optimizing. Okay, fantastic. So I know what a data science work, data science lifecycle process looks like. Um, apparently there's a bunch of tools and platforms to use, more than just a Jupyter notebook and Python. Um, so we have a bunch of visualization, visualizations tools. So we have Matplotlib, Seaborn, Plotly, ClickSense. Um, sorry, this mic is... This sounds fine, great. So we have a bunch of visualization tools, uh, Map.lib, Seaborn, Plotly, ClickSense, Tableau, um, and I, didn't, I only used Tableau, I think, in my second year of university, and apparently it'll be useful. Later on, it wasn't either, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> um, we also have a bunch of frameworks and languages. I am a Java kid. I did Python for like six months in first year. Apparently, I would need it again. I would definitely would need, need it again because I use it every day, so I've become a Python kid. Um, and obviously, also SQL, which we also I think we did one module on SQL in second year. It actually ended up being useful, you know? <laughs> then you have a bunch of machine learning libraries, scikit-learn, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Keras. I didn't actually know what these were, even though I did a machine learning course. You'd expect them to at least introduce, it, introduce us to a few. Only learned about them in the beginning. And then you also have a bunch of data wrangling tools as well, so Pandas, NumPy, and SciPy. Okay, great. So I know what the tools are, right? I know what the different platforms are, I know what language to use, but I am still 100% confused, to be honest. <laughs> um, um, and I was at pretty much, I think, in my first year of adulting, first year of working, I honestly was terrified of asking questions. Like, that is me as a person, I'm a nervous wreck, like 95% of the time. And I was like, I need to sort of get over that. So um, I spoke to one of the other newbies in the team, because, you know, newbies need to stick together. Um, and he obviously had more experience about all of this, and he was more passionate about it. He has, to be honest, he has like an incredible way of thinking. Um, and I only sort of noticed that when I started speaking to him regarding data science. And so he really helped me understand what exactly am I supposed to be doing, because I obviously don't know what I'm doing. Um, and by speaking to him, I was able to sort of find a way to, to ask the right questions when it came to data science and some of the problems that we'd have to come, I mean, sorry, some of the problems that we'd have to run into. So I was like, okay, cool. So I need to ask more questions. What type of questions should I be asking, which I was apparently not asking before. So one, do I even know what the problem was about? The Titanic, um, the reason, so with the Titanic, I think the problem that was trying to be solved was like, who's more likely, um, who's more likely to be able to, so to be able to survive the Titanic shipwreck? Um, first of all, I haven't even watched the Titanic, so how am I supposed to understand the problem? <laughs> um, so second of all, um, do I even understand how some algorithms work? Yeah, fine, I can code them from scratch, but like, 
do I, do I even know what they mean? Because it's like there's a whole bunch, and they can be used, and some of them can only be used in certain um, situations. So do I even know how they work? Do I even know what the parameters inside that um, inside the some algorithms even mean? Because I know a lot of people just kind of go one, two, three until it sounds right. But there's a reason for each. There's a, there's a reason for each. Um, each um, parameter that you use. Um, have I used an ID, um, unique identifier? So in the Titanic data set, I, I think I used, I used Titanic data set, but also just in general, um, uh, there's like so those IDs, and obviously IDs are unique identifier for each row. So if you have a unique identifier for each row, each row you're kind of just, kind of just giving it the answer anyways. Um, and then you also, do I even know how to tell stories? Do I even know how to communicate well to the stakeholders? Do I even know how to um, visualize data? Um, that I had to learn. Um, have I even selected the best features? Um, did I just select all the features and think it makes sense? Um, did I know that within the data itself, um, within the data itself, there's certain, there's, there's, sorry, Within the data itself, it looks a certain way, and obviously some features are more are more um, important than others, whether it be age, or whether, like, for um, example, if they have siblings or um, they class. Um, also, how messy is the data itself? Um, did I even look at the data? Did I, did I even open the CSV file and see there's blanks and nulls? <laughs> and, and yeah. So how did I exactly manage everything in the end? Um, number one, because um, it's obviously been a very long journey, and there's a lot, there's a lot of there's a lot of things I've had to learn over the past over the past two years, um, and because I'm 100% a nervous wreck all the time, I had to first of all learn that I need to stop stressing and to slow down, even when I talk, because um, <laughs> I stress a lot, and a lot of time you don't kind of you don't really feel like your your skills your, your skills and your background is good enough. So I need to kind of learn how to get rid of those feelings and also to make sure I get rid of the feeling of like I'm not good enough. Um, number two, read up on what other people are doing because that's important. There's a lot of content out there, right? There's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of tutorials and YouTube videos and articles, especially on the medium and towards data science. So just read up on what other people are doing. And even though there is a lot of content out there, just try to stick to one thing, because that's what I did. So I tried, I was like, even though I was very overwhelmed by all this, all this content, I was like, let me just go with the first Udemy tutorial. And I was like, let me just go with the first YouTube channel that I went to, and it worked out in the end. Um, three, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask questions not only to yourself, but to your teammates, and also to business as well. Um, four, be curious. Um, be curious about the problem that you're working in. Try and apply it to real life. Um, also, be curious about the data as well that you're working with. So, what is actually what exactly is in the data? Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes, even if you, for some reason, bring down the cluster or I don't know, <laughs> bring down the platform. Don't do that. But even if you do, I didn't do that. At least I don't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be afraid to make mistakes. <laughs> and obviously, don't forget to learn from those mistakes as well. And number six, consistency is key. It's important to challenge yourself. Um, keep reading up, keep reading. Um, so when I was actually looking past some of the slides well, from university, because I also use that as a frame of, frame of reference, I realized that they gave us a lot of books on machine learning, and I honestly just didn't read them. So don't do that. Make sure you go through all the content. Make sure you're consistent. Make sure you find new material to look at. And number seven, community. So obviously, community is important, whether it be at work or if you just um, have a community of people that you met at certain tech events. Um, that's important because they, they're a great support. Um, they're, really, they're a really great support structure. So I mentioned a bunch of, um, so also mentioned um, learning platforms and communities and events that you can go to. So learning platforms. <laughs> There's the normal ones, I guess. You have a Coursera and Audacity. I mainly worked, I mean, I mainly I mean, used Udemy as well. Um, even though sometimes, sometimes you end up buying a bunch of courses because they're unspecial and <laughs> you end up not finishing them. Don't do that. Try and stick to one. And you also have Explore Data Science Academy, which is like a South African um, data science learning institution. And then you have Zindi and Kaggle. So I think Kaggle is, the, I guess, the online data science competition platform. Um, and then Zindi is a South African, has more, not necessarily South African, but African, has a lot of African data science problems as well that you can um, solve and help with. And there's a bunch of communities and events that you can go to. Um, these are like the ones in the bottom right are just like 
if I just Google, they're right there. So, um, and then also the top, on top right, um, there's women in big data, um, there's Pi Data Joe Berg. There's a lot of there's a lot of meetup groups as well if you just join the meetup app. And yeah, so I think it really helped um, being familiar with all all of these, and also being familiar of um, being familiar with all these platforms and um, communities and events. It really helped within my journey in the past two years. Um, so yeah, so thank you, thank you for coming to my talk. Um, don't forget to follow me on Extra underscore Bytes on Twitter, and you can just email me as well if you want. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs> questions. <laughs> Once again, could we have another mic on the other side of the room? Uh, questions? Anyone? Please be nice. Anyone? Yes. From they have to be nice questions, and they have to have a question mark at the end and be not too long. Anyone? Yes. Hi. Person I've never met before. Wait for the mic <laughs> and speak into the mic so we can hear you. Um, hi, everyone. So I have a question for you, Bilele. Um, so for a person who might be moving from a normal software engineering background to trying to move into data science, um, even though you have a bit of machine learning experience, what would, I mean, I, I know you showed a lot of like, resources there, but yep. what would be the easiest transition, especially with you being new to your job, what do you think would be the easiest way to kind of join into the field of data science? Because it sounds scary from the outside, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it still is scary. Um, <laughs> um, so I think some of the things that you can do, from, especially from yes, moving from a software engineering and going to data science, I think is also not necessarily my background as well, because I was mainly just a CS grad, not necessarily a software engineer. Um, the first thing you can do is, I guess, find a course. That's the first starting point. So just find like a course, um, even if you don't have to go on Udemy or anything, just go on YouTube and find like a intro data science talk. Um, and if you really don't like YouTube, um, then I think you can try and find a boot camp as well. Um, there's, a, there's, I guess, there's the Explore Data Science Academy um, as well that you can attend. And what else is there? Um, try, uh, try Kaggle. Uh, apparently, it really helps <laughs> as a starting point as well. There's a bunch of problems there, and there's also, a, there's also a great community as well in there that can help you in the long run. Did I answer your question? I think we can squeeze in one more question. Anyone? That person over there? Oh, could you hand up again? Yeah. Hi. Greetings. Yes. Uh, I'm curious uh, uh, about storytelling. Can you get by in science without, without having good storytelling? Without good storytelling? Um, who? Can get by without good storytelling? I think so. I think I was terrible at doing that. I have a tendency of, of just summarizing a lot of things. Um, so I think initially you can get by, but as the time grows, obviously you'll need to try and um, try and improve those skills in the long run. Especially, for example, as I mentioned, there's like a step there in terms of being able to commute, communicate really well to business. So storytelling will be important um, eventually, especially if you're like in the workplace. But as a starting point, if you're just trying to learn, then not necessarily. But if you're in the workplace and you or you have a company, it's going to eventually be useful. Did so, I answer your question? Yes, and there's a follow-up question. Yes. So uh, is there maybe like a subfield in the science where it does not require story uh, storytelling? Sorry, is there? Is there maybe is there maybe a a sub uh, sub like section of data science that yes. doesn't require storytelling. Um, not that I know of. You can ask my team. Is there? Yes. <laughs> Wait for Mike. Okay, last question, everyone. Yeah, it's just a comment. Um, I mean, the I don't know if you were in the previous talk. A uh, really good talk on machine learning engineering. I guess that will be like give you exposure to machine learning, some of the techniques there, but not necessarily being exposed to the business side of things. So there was this nice diagram uh, that was up, where machine learning is more this intersection has got components of uh, data science, it's got components of in data engineering, uh, backend engineering, and so on, and that could be a great place to start. 
uh, and you'll still be kind of, uh, you know, like part of the fourth industrial revolution, as it were. Um, but without necessarily, you know, so if you're more like a back-end person, then that would be that would be perfect. And there's lots of uh, lots of people needed in that field. My view. Great okay. view. <laughs> so I believe it is now lunchtime, yeah. but you are welcome to continue this discussion informally over lunch. Um, yes, and we I think session restarts at half past one. I think it's it's in the schedule. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Let's have another round of applause for our speaker.